right before we truly delve delve into the video i would like to say a few things before we get into that welcome back ladies and gentlemen sending out a lot of love and remember regardless of my love remember to love yourself reprogram your mind because mindset is literally everything but shout out to wendigoon again these videos have been awesome if you wants me to take down any of these videos i do not mind and uh yes sending out a lot of love <laughs> got that done just making sure i got this cough too that i'm trying to keep at bay whole throat thing still going on but i'm healing i don't think i give it enough time to heal because then i hop back into recording um don't worry i'm not sick of the conspiracy theory iceberg i'm enjoying it there's just other requests i feel so wrong when i don't get to kind of feel like a guilty feeling but i know it's it's on my time so um other than that this is part seven two of three right before we get in hop right into it i would just like to say if uh if you don't want to subscribe or anything like that to become part of the dopest team the founders then you can just leave a like or a comment or any recommendations of other videos and besides that i have a patreon down below so i wanted to announce this i usually don't do this but it's only a dollar if you just like to would, would like to support the channel i monetization is like two pennies and most of these videos get claimed anyways which is cool but not not when the goons but the other videos i do so it's like it's really nothing but other than that you just being here and watching the video and telling me to keep going has been really cool really awesome and i really feel like i'm in my purpose so thank you to for just overall just being here it's been a great ride great journey still trying to keep the cough at bay so if i'm talking weird that is really why but um other than that let's hop straight into this no more time wasted let's go Woo. hello everybody and we are back with tier 7 part 2 of let's the go. conspiracy theory iceberg. iceberg real quick before we get started a couple things i want to mention well, this t right here is so ridiculously hot i can't even like I, I have to touch it like that because the rest of the glass is just heated one sec okay now we continue <laughs> now we continue let's go uh i now officially have an artist who's going to be doing the work for me she's ex doing the work for me she's actually crazy. the person who did my logo design which is my profile picture and the design that went on the sweaters but it looks like she's going to be doing future designs as well so i'm going to link her information in the description below along with the editor so if you Let's want see. to follow either of them i encourage you to check them out and also even though he may never see this thank you mr gg for shouting out my video it's so wild seeing people that i've watched for literal years um say me by name and put me on stuff and it really does mean the most so, Mr. GG, if you ever see this, thank you so much. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into this. But as always, thank you for watching. Rapture already happened is in reference to the rapture event mentioned in the biblical text of Revelations. For those that don't know, there's debate among Christian groups of when exactly the rapture is supposed to take place. Not only like what year it will happen, but what- Shoot, if rapture already happened and the whole theory that we're all just stuck in a time loop, I mean, technically, I guess it already did. <laughs> Even if it did, also, like, I won't talk more about it, but, yeah. When it will happen within the actual telling of the end of the world itself. See, there's something mentioned in the book Revelations known as the Tribulation Period. This is a period of time in which the Earth goes from doing really, really well to really, really bad in a span of seven years. However, if mm. someone was of the belief that... For example, in the book of Genesis, when it talks about how the world was formed, that the world was formed in seven days, that it's not actually seven days and more like 7,000 years, then imagine what seven year tribulation period would actually be. In other well, some people, a lot of people actually talk about, you know, the whole 5D shift and the golden age of the planet is right now and yada yada. So I feel like we're in 2022. So this is probably going to be some of like the five best years, no matter how digital it becomes, how VR integrated it comes. Mindset and perception is everything. Like I said in the beginning of the video, yeah, I've been on a kind of like a level up in my mind. It's like pushing into a new form of me that really started understanding my own mind. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm really kind of on this whole wave where like, so how he said the whole seven year thing i'm like well let's start just thinking now that this is going to be the best seven years like really why not and um <laughs> i don't know really much with that but uh, there was something i was going to say a bit about the science of the bible and stuff but i'll leave it the words if you're not literal with interpretations of time in the bible then a seven year tribulation period 
might as well be 7,000. So in the Bible, when it mentions that during the tribulation period, God no longer interacts with the world, the devil has full control of it, and evil run rampant, and if that is a period of time like 7,000 years, then what's to say we're not currently living in that? As a matter of fact, there are some beliefs that the rapture happened immediately after Jesus' crucifixion, which would mean that we're all living in a devil-controlled world and God won't hear us. So, again, only positive vibes on this channel. <laughs> only in positive vibes on this channel, facts. Yeah. The game is in reference to journalist William Grider. Grider wrote from everyone from the Washington Times. Again, to the again, if you guys like really want me to just start pouring out my personal thoughts and feelings just to see it from like my perspective, like if you're really coming here from my perspective, I'll deliver it to you without judgment because I realize I'm sacrificing a bit of myself to, to do these videos and be a little bit scared to say something. So again, about the devil and God as entities, they, I believe... Personally, if you want me to just tell you, they both exist within you. And once you realize that, again, everything is in the mind, you start to change. Things start to change when you realize, really realize that. But the whole, what I always used to laugh about as a kid was the whole devil and angel on your shoulder um, analogy. But technically, angel, so it'd be demon and angel, but they say devil. So the devil on your shoulder. They don't say devil and God on your shoulder. They say devil and angel, at least from my experience. But they're both energies that exist within you, higher and lower nature. And to be fair, I think this world is a lawless land. <laughs> and it takes the shape and form of whatever you believe it to be, which is very true in a sense. There's there's truth to it. It's like every, all truths are half truths, blah, blah, that whole thing. But yeah, nah. I don't ever think there's no entity. Like I said, I, I made a joke about that whole uh, devil crying analogy where like God had his arm on the devil and dude was boo-hooing and crying and being a little bitch. And he was like, this is why my videos don't make any money. But the, <laughs> um, he was sitting there and he said, what's wrong? And he was, everybody keeps blaming me for their problems. And I just think that's so funny because it's true. It's like no one wants to take accountability for their actions. It's the devil got into me. It's like, okay. Rolling Stones. However, the work that puts him on his list is his 1987 book, Secrets of the Temple, How the Federal Reserve Runs a Country. The book mm. essentially talks about how there is a secret society that exists underneath the United States government and how they're proliferated through the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve is building up a plan in order to enact a new world order okay. and Illuminati and all that stuff. It's another theory that falls in line with the idea that banking circles are the ones actually running the country I and politicians that. essentially exist as figureheads. Soy spraying and weaponized soy is in reference to the proliferation of soy products in modern industry. If you'll notice in the last few years especially, Soy has popped up more and more as either a substitute or a source in different foods and supplements. Yeah. However, soy itself is an actual estrogen supplement and when consumed by males in large quantities can lead to testosterone deficiency. What the theory is saying is that the powers that be have put soy products everywhere they're not supposed to be in order to demoralize and demasculate their people who wow. could <laughs> knew where that was going immediately turn them if they ever saw fit you can go further and say that with weaponized soy that similar to how governments especially the united states government has been accused of psyops and long-term chemical warfare over time the exact same thing but with soy products with soy product. in order to make the enemy less masculine so what i'm saying really? is Government sanctioned weapon. I feel like they would have to consume a lot of soy unless the effects of soy kick off really fast. But I feel like that would be different, varying from person to person. Nice femboys. Yeah. Bicameralism comes from a 1976 book written by Julian Jays. Julian had a very interesting theory from where human consciousness God came from. His himself. idea was that as early as 3,000 years ago, the original forms of consciousness began to be created. And that before that, the brain was divided into two parts. One part told the other what to do, and the second part acted on it. And while you may think that's how consciousness works on its own, I am saying that it is a very literal 
one side of your brain communicates to the other the other side has no thought process and simply carries oh, and out simply action. Carries this out means action. that there is no form of contemplation decision making or thinking in the way that we would think of it now one of julian's references to this is such as the characters that were mentioned in the iliad never really thought or decided what they were doing instead they just kind of did things so according to this theory before the past three millennia society existed with no meaning of self-awareness and according to this theory as society developed we began to find the need to ask ourselves why so the two sides of our brain mm, that hit my brain different that's actually wild if you think about it it's like that joke about randomly gaining consciousness at three years old. Brain kind of Whoa. formed over the one that seems to ask questions and that became the modern form of consciousness. Tough. Or in other words, the commanded part of the brain learned to think for itself and the part that gave commands simply began to ask questions. Staring anxiety is the most literal form of brain rot. According to this theory, mm. staring at any electronic screen for an amount of time will fry your brain and not in the way that a parent would tell you to stop playing video games they fry your brain oh, in a literal your neurons begin to shut off and die kind of way <laughs> this would of course over time make a modern population a lot dumber so therefore this theory is saying that the reason screens are everywhere around us and proliferated so much is a way for the elites to further control us mentally ancient structure purpose is a i could see that but I see, I feel like the things that are on the screens are more dangerous than the thing, than the screen itself. If you pick up what I'm saying. Huge topic to tackle, but I can get a few of them out ancient of the structure For example, purpose. there are theories that ancient pyramids and cigarettes were actually the beginning of a sort of mining facility. Or in other words, whatever being... Well, okay, before he goes into what he has researched about this, I also heard that some of them were built for floods like if like the pyramids and stuff if it were to flood they had like okay i might get the wording wrong because i have not used this word in a while but like is it irrigation tunnels or like ton like some sort of i don't know if this has been discovered too i can't because i can't remember the research that i did but um there were like tunnels under the water under these temples that would indicate if water was to flow in it have a way of draining out to or like yeah it was something crazy it was i was like oh shoot and like all these temples were built in these manners and they were like found around different cultures to be built in the same manner to flood if water ever rose for some reason higher than the temple means actually created them was doing so in order to stage a way to get inside of the earth maybe even hollow earth whereas other theories talk about how societies had these very advanced forms of architecture that doesn't really make sense for the time they were in for example in china people built entire palaces into the sides of cliffs something that is hard to understand and hard to accomplish by today's means furthermore in persia that never makes sense to me bro they managed to run water systems off of the top of snow-capped mountains all the way down into their cities in order to have year-round cold water a lot of this also gets back into the idea of sacral architecture which is essentially architecture that is created for the sake of a sacredness rather than purpose so you could think of this as like temples and buildings of religious worship a lot of them are believed to be too advanced for their time or too advanced for the people that lived around these structures so therefore some special means created them rather than just the people themselves and i also have to mention my favorite theory which i talked about in the last episode that the tower of babel was a launching platform for the anunnaki aliens to shoot their space ship back into space <laughs> yeah real intentions of the rotoruda is actually something that i mentioned all the way back in tier two rotoruda if you'll remember is a comic that supposedly has a hidden meaning saying that our political leaders want to return us to a gold standard in order to leave banking organizations this all kind of falls back on the idea that banks and politics have hated each other and don't shake hands and get as long as much as we may think they do. However, real intentions for the Rotoruda is an entire game plan for exactly how they're gonna do it. Short version goes like this. 
Step one, in the 1970s, all of the world's banking systems became ran by computers. Part two, because of this, secret cabals or <clears throat> cults around the world managed to have control of what markets rose and fall and were able to build wealth by riding off of it. Mm -hmm. Step three, ever since the early 1900s, the United States has been hiding its actual capabilities and resources so that now in the modern day, they can manage to produce false scarcity, creating scarcity among other nations which then the u.s can find all of these resources and then maintain themselves as a world power this is all saying that supposedly banks are getting in the way of that grand scheme and in other words markets can be used as a way to subvert things like fossil fuels step four ever since 9 11 these politicians have wanted banking groups out of their inner circles and have actively been making steps in order to remove their technological influence step five which is where we're currently at is that the politicians or elites are trying to build up crypto money, trading, lending, whatever, to such a degree that it will inevitably crash all around the world, which will lead to a need for a new system, which is when they can then step in step and create in. the new gold standard. Most okay, so that was kind of, that was really, really boring when it came to stuff like that. <laughs> but when it came to the crypto thing, didn't crypto already crash by this point? Wasn't there like some talk about it crashing? I truly don't know. I really have not gotten into crypto or NFTs or anything like that when, with this digital currency. So I'm not sure. Not my place to speak on, not my lane. But like I said, not my lane. Didn't really have much to say. Apologies for that. But. Most drugs are benevolent is <clears throat> saying that most drugs, if not all drugs, are actually helpful to the human body, but are therefore stigmatized or poisoned by the powers that be so that we don't become too powerful this is considered because drugs can possibly unlock okay. new potential in the human brain which would be bad to the people who want to subjugate us and keep us <clears throat> under their rule if we suddenly sort of evolved a lot of this okay i don't okay with this i don't know if i can say too much about it but i like that i feel like this is for the one reason like you know microdosing on psil psilocybin and things like that like microdosing on mushrooms in places where it's legal don't do drugs i don't even know if psilocybin is really legal anywhere i think it's illegal well no i ah oh, there's a whole thing on it i don't know anyways <clears throat> what i would say is i'm just gonna throw it out there i'm gonna throw the term placebo effect this saying. goes back to the stoned ape theory which is the idea that the reason we evolved from monkeys into what we are now is that monkeys eventually figured out how to use hallucinogenics, which opened up new brain pathways, which created us. So in other words, our leaders who want us under their thumb do not want us to go through another cycle of evolution. Closely related to that is the theory of proto-humans. Proto-humans is the idea that there was more than just one kind of pre-human like we think there was. Like for example, the Neanderthal DNA, which every human has a portion of, can actually be found in different variations and even mixed with different kind of genomes depending on what region of the world you're in. Mm. For example, in some parts of the world, in the portion that would mostly be Neanderthal, there is something known as Denisovan DNA, which is believed to be a competitor to the Neanderthal gene. This is implying Denisovan. that there was a lot more complicated roots of humanity than we may think there are. And in mm. other words, probably very violent competition led to the modern humanity that we know today. Dublin, Wisconsin is the town that doesn't exist. Supposedly there was a town in the Sparta Green Bay area of Wisconsin that just disappeared in between the 80s and 90s. What? Officially there exists no records of it. However, there is still tourist memorabilia that people have. Certain people have memories of a small town being destroyed by either a fire or a gas leak, depending on who you ask. And people even supposedly received radio transmissions from radio stations in Dublin all the way into the late 90s. Whenever I was doing research for this, there were like a thousand people who went missing in the late 80s and early 90s around the Green Bay area. And also the guys who were supposedly receiving the radio signals were all dead. So. Bro, what? <clears throat> Why do things happen like this? in this freaking divine matrix or whatever this is what what wh how does this happen oh the absolute sorry saps to be the guys listening to it makes me think about that horror game not firewatch that was a good game 
but those horror games where you're in the radio station it's there's one like significant one that you're probably thinking of that pops up in your head when i reference the horror game um and a radio tower that that's what that makes me think of i'm sure that's not troubling at all finland doesn't exist not originally comes from the same blyfield logic that i mentioned in tier three i think it was which essentially follows the whole logic of have you ever been to finland do you know anyone from finland oh. well then finland just doesn't exist if you answer no to both of those it's along the whole lines of believing only what you see believing and furthermore you if see. you're from finland you're fed if you know someone from finland half the time you can't even believe what you see you just have to you really just have to discern things for yourself or have a good discernment of what your truth is damn it's really tough we get these conspiracy theory ice breaks really get make you start getting deep i i low-key can't wait till this is over but i also enjoyed so much because it brings you down a rabbit hole where you're just like okay you need a break from conspiracy theory so like i've definitely because of my past have had a good way to put a block in letting this really affect my vibration where i'm just enjoying it i remember going down some of these rabbit holes when i was way younger and i was like yo i really feel like i shouldn't be doing this but everything happens for a reason so i'm gonna keep digging but like now now i love the enjoyment but i'm like oh my gosh i can't wait to like see the final final tears and the really like is this has all been cool some little lame things in between like for certain topics in the iceberg but other than that, I'm just like, uh, I'm glad that I, like, kind of <laughs> don't do this anymore. Digging, like, this is way funner than going and digging up them. It's cooler to watch when the goon, like, talk about them. I like listening to him. And I like giving you guys my, my little input, so. They're fed, and if you've ever visited Finland. Finland doesn't exist for me then, I guess. Anyone on my channel from Finland, does it exist? If you tell me, I'll completely be like, yeah, okay, you exist. <laughs> the feds tricked with that logic literally oh shit wow okay never mind i'll stop pausing you also in research i found this copy pasta that is too funny to not mention so the population of finland is about 6.5 million people now when comparing that to the population of the entire world which is about 7.2 billion finland makes up 0.09 percent of the world's population it's not 1%, it's not even a tenth of a percent. Or in other words, 99.9% .9 of people who exist in the world are not from Finland. We get this number from government census, which government census has a percent error of about 1%. Or in other words, about 10 times the amount of percent that Finland makes <laughs> oh, up in the Finland. world. In other words, by statistical standards, there's a pretty solid chance that Finland does <laughs> not exist. So if you're fucking stupid <laughs> that's so stupid jesus i love that he found that that's great from finland uh, i hate to be the one to break the news to you but you're not real sorry also it's so wild that like sitting here just talking into a camera there's a solid chance that someone from finland will see this the internet's crazy man number stations exist true internet's cool as, as coded <clears throat> radio all messages that are used to send transmissions to foreign intelligence agencies from behind enemy lines or think of it this way say during the cold war there was a russian spy in the united states and he needs to get information back to his russian handlers well he can't just get on a radio and begin saying exactly what he wants to tell them because then anyone could listen in and anyone yeah. could figure out what he's doing but if he was to just send numbers that corresponded to a code grid that the Russians had, well then no one would know what he's trying to say except for the people he wants to hear it. Now I need to make it clear, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is a very open practice that has existed all the way from World War I in which they did the same thing with Morse code. And during the Cold War, this was a very preferred method of transmitting information out of the country. However, what's interesting is the proliferation of how they exist today. To just give an example, there are several old radio towers that exist in a sort of swampland just outside of St. Petersburg, Russia. For the past 40 years, there's been a broadcast coming out of there that has been titled MDZHB, and all that it is is one continuous droning noise, and every few seconds there's a sound that sounds similar to a foghorn. Not only that, but about once or twice a week, either a man or woman will come on and just say random words in Russian, implying that whatever words are being said is a sort of code. And if you've got a radio that can pick up on the signal since it's shortwave, you can tune in to 4625KHZ and listen to it at any time. 
The leading theory with this radio station is that it's potentially part of the Russian government, which explains why they don't do anything about it or really care that it's there. And furthermore, that it is a dead hand signal. Or in other words, that monotone string is keeping something from happening, say a nuclear device. These are actually in themselves not a conspiracy, as there have been devices that are made to pick up on a certain radio frequency, and if that frequency ever stops, the device detonates. This is sort of like a last laugh protocol. So mm. say if they- Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Whatever. There was some explosive in a foreign country, and that foreign country attacked Russia, therefore destroying the radio signal, they get blown up as well. This is just one of many number stations, and there are a whole lot weirder ones I found, such as the Lincolnshire Poacher. I found enough information that I'm definitely going to be doing a deeper dive on this, just to talk about all the different number stations that have been found around the world, because there are some weird ones. Everest Cover-Ups is speaking of the series of deaths that occur on Everest that are supposedly covered up. I've, I've already spoke before about the Sherpas of Mount Everest and the legends of the Himalayan zombies in the regions around. However, this one has a bit more wider stretching application. See, you may not know this, but if someone dies on Mount Everest, they don't recover the body. The reason for it is because once you pass a certain point in altitude, it is way too dangerous to try to get people to recover something than it is to just leave it there. Also, it's so cold that in most cases, the body never really decomposes. What this means is there are near perfectly preserved bodies all over the mountain of Mount Everest, and not only that, they are used as trail markers in order for climbers to find their way up. In researching this, there's a lot of weird stories. Like they talk about reaching the destination of Green Boots Cave because there's a dead body out front that has green boots. Almost all these deaths are attributed to exhaustion, which makes sense considering the feats that they have to accomplish in such a low oxygen yes. environment. Furthermore, there are nearly 200 bodies on the mountain itself. But here's what's weird. So I said most of them don't decompose, but some of them do. And some of them decompose immediately next to bodies that don't decompose at all. Which means you can have two people up on the mountain, each there for decades. One is a skeleton and the other seems like a perfectly intact person who's just sleeping. Combine that with the fact that certain hikers have reported that bodies have been found where they're not supposed to be. And then combine that with the Himalayan zombies legend that I mentioned earlier, and then mix all that in with the legends of the Sherpas. I like it how I like how casual he's going about it, but how on to something he he's like, okay. <clears throat> real, real kinda like um what is it? Real, real strong claim I'm trying to make here with just watching a guy on the end of a microphone behind a video. But I feel like from like the like the reading I'm getting from him, yo, he feels really good saying this right now. Like, yo, because I love that when I try to like string things together. Who guard the secret Shangri La, which is considered an entrance to hollow earth and protected by spirits, and the implications get implicitous. Tao conspiracy Ha <laughs> ha, I like that. I like that. That was cool. That's weird. Reported seeing bodies in other I, okay, so at first I thought it was going to be some whole different weird loophole with the whole bodies being next to another body and like one being a skeleton, one being perfectly preserved. You know, it makes me think about a Scooby-Doo episode I've seen, but all right. Conspiracy is a conspiracy that's kind of obvious, but you may have never thought about that the paper towel dispensers that look like they have a camera in it absolutely have a camera in it. Now, of course, it's illegal to put a camera in the bathroom for obvious reasons. However... When has that ever stopped certain powers that be from, from spying on their people? This wouldn't just stop at the motion sensors on paper towel dispensers, oh. but also urinals and toilets urinals. because gross. And fills in the loophole that in such a surveillance state, there would be so many obvious blind spots that people can get away with whatever they're doing unless they aren't blind spots and they just want you to think they are. All religions are the same is the concept that's kind of been mentioned in tears earlier, that all religions can be traced back to a single founder. So like, for example, whenever I mentioned the Anunnaki coming down from space or your ideas of Jesus or what have you, the idea being that there was one original event that happened 
and then as culture spread out, the story simply the stories with each culture. Yeah. This would explain the reason. That just makes so much sense. That's how I was as a kid. I kind of I knew this. I realized this as a kid, like with all different mythos and mythology and yada yada yada. I was like, oh, it's pretty much all the same things. Like it really makes so much sense. So no one needs to fight about it. Just believe what you believe. And so many different cultures have the same ideas of heaven and hell, even if they're named different ideas of a godhead and summing of salvation either through works or belief, all the way down to concepts like angels and demons. Essentially saying that all religions are the same, just extra steps away from whatever the original source was. Valley of Lost Candles is a reference to stolen props from the 1967 movie, The Valley of the Dolls. The plot of Valley of the Dolls was a group of girls who go to Hollywood in order to become famous and slowly have to give away pieces of themselves in one way or the other in order to achieve that goal. Given the mysterious nature of things that happen underground in Hollywood, the movie was kind of seen at a look behind the veil of what goes on in the industry. Supposedly, several of the props, such as candles, that were used on the movie were used in actual witchcraft and carried bad spirits with them. After the movie was over, several of these props went missing. One story even says that they were stolen Seven. by critic Roger Ebert. Theories using in this, this lead hand. all the way to say that- I was using this hand too. Seven. Seven of the props. Perhaps one of the reasons that one of the film's lead roles, Sharon Tate, killed in such a grisly manner is because she made the spirits upset by losing their possessions. Advanced cryptozoology is exactly what it says. Advanced levels of standard cryptozoology, or in other words, the stories of creatures that may or may not exist. Now, when most people think of cryptids, they think of things like Bigfoot and Mothman and other known characters in cryptid lore. However, there is a wealth of creatures out there that exist that the majority of people have never even heard of. Things that exist in an esoteric fashion, or mm. are figments of the mind that have been manifested into creatures. Mm. This all gives the implication that the world is much more proliferated with creatures that we can't explain than we like to think. I'm going to save it there, I like because that. my next video is going to be a huge dive into cryptids and advanced cryptids themselves. I gotta watch it. a special it. guest who I'm excited for, so this is a teaser for that. Just wait. Asian Overlord's Triad is in reference to the idea that mobs in Asia have much more power than most people think. Specifically Eastern Asia, in which regions like Hong Kong have one of the most powerful crime syndicates in the world. The idea being that by running connections back and figuring out who pays who, these crime syndicates control a lot of the politics that exist in the Chinese government. Not only that, but the idea that the reason crime is allowed to be so proliferated in the underground world of Hong Kong is because the Chinese government is allowing them to exist and they have a sort of symbiotic relationship in order to keep Hong Kong in check. This applies further to say that the same can be said about the Yakuza in Japan, and even Asian mobs that supposedly act independently throughout other parts of the world are actually controlled by a centralized government. Looking at dark energy is our next super weird physics concept. So known matter in the universe makes up like about the um this one right here that we just went past the asian overlords thing <laughs> i like to think that like was it gta that built this for me as a kid i like to just think that all crime organizations are like tied to each other can't go i, I, go, I know i can't say that and then just keep going but i want to just continue with the video but I'll come back to it at the end. Or no, no, I'll just say it. it's like it's like you know how there's different gangs here. Just imagine like these gangs here are connected to ones overseas, and it's like all one big ring. Twenty percent so. of everything that supposedly exists, whereas dark energy makes up about twenty-five. The rest is dark matter, but we're not talking about that right now. Supposedly, dark energy exists absolutely everywhere and is does not conform to any of our understanding of electronics, magnetics, heat or anything that we can really use to prove its existence. The reason this is theorized is because gaps that exist in our understanding of how molecules and the world operate around us. And several believe that we are on the fringe of technology to being able to create something that can detect this dark energy. While some believe this can be used as a sort of power source that would be pretty much infinite considering it makes up more matter than the matter that exists in our known universe. <laughs> Others theorize that perhaps the reason we can't see it is because we're not supposed to, and perhaps these are the fibers that hold us together from a fabricated reality we exist in. The 2006 volleyball incident is the tragedy that never happened. 
See, a lot of people remember that there was an event of some kind, either a school shooting or a bombing, that happened during a high school volleyball game in 2006. Stories range, but everyone remembers that it came from either the Nebraska or Dakota's region of the United States, and several people remember specific details of people saying that it was worse than Columbine. There are several stories that exist online of people traveling to, say, Mount Rushmore, and then hearing on the radio that there has been a, quote, massacre at a high school. People remembering having conversations about how awful it is and how this relates to the bigger issue of gun control, and even weird details like the gym had a blue mascot, and in crime scene images, the net from the volleyball game was still up. However, there's no record of this, and there's no official reports that ever happened, and although people can vary on small details of- So it's like a Mandela effect. There's so much Mandela effect things that happen around or in this reality. It's such a weird thing. But mm, I was going to say, I wonder if I recall anything. But in 2006, I was being a little badass kid. Nah, I'm just joking. I'm a, I was a good kid. Sorry to break it to y'all that I think I got the neck tattoos and stuff. And like, I'm a criminal. Nah, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I don't know. I was trying something. I'm cringy at times. You guys know this. Come on. That's why you watch me. But no. I was a good kid. I, I was going to I was gonna laugh and say I think I was like playing Spyro or something in 2006. <laughs> Story, everyone universally agrees that it did happen who remember it. Most who mm. believe the 2006 volleyball incident say it is an extreme example of the Mandela effect or some form of government cover-up for a reason that isn't really known. Artificial Aliens says that perhaps aliens aren't just non-carbon based, like we began to theorize, but are not organic based or organic in any sense that we understand. You know those random radio waves that we hear from space every now and then? What if that's simply these things manner of communication? What if these things don't even have a form of consciousness and exist as a life so far set apart from ours that we don't really comprehend it? Some even tie this into the greater theory of humanity cycle, which I'll mention at some point, either in this iceberg or a different video. But the idea that like a million years ago, we were a functioning technological society and we sent these artificial creatures into space and they began to proliferate for themselves. And now these aliens that we're talking to are simply creatures we created out there in the cosmos somewhere. That's sick. I like that. The secret Mongolian empire is in reference to the idea that the Mongolian Empire never existed. Think about it this way. The Mongolian Empire would be the only empire that had no linguistic or cultural effects on the world around them after their disappearance. Not only that, but there exists no architecture to prove that they were ever a society structured together. And yes, while they were recorded as a nomadic society, there should still be something that shows where they are and where they inhabited. On top of that, there exists no Mongolian folklore or form of religion or legend or anything like that. It seems as they simply appeared then disappeared at random. Now, what we do know existed was Genghis Khan ear. and the actions he committed in the- My left ear started ringing. Very interesting. I'm getting a lot, ear, ear ringing a lot. And like I said, I don't like wearing headphones, so I don't think it's tinnitus. I don't listen to things pretty loud, so, oh. Shit, I went into explaining that like I didn't know what this was. <laughs> it's for somebody to listen. <laughs> I gotta stop doing that. I gotta catch myself, but ears ringing. The area that is now known as China. The idea behind this theory is that Genghis Khan went on to create another- My ear rang because I was a part of that Mongolian empire. The government or society that wanted to continue to exist in the modern world and so as to cover up their history to not appear as barbarians, they created the Mongolian Empire as a farce in order oh. to write away their bad history. Non-space is another crazy physics concept, and the too long didn't read- I could really see that last one because whoever is in control, well, of the history, but like as history is passed from hand to hand, there's going to be revisions and changes, and like so many shows show you this too. Like, oh, we're not going to write this included. And I feel like, um, damn, I want to reference shows, but bro, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Okay, I'm going to spoil The Last Kingdom for a little bit. So if you haven't seen The Last Kingdom, first of all, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Go watch it. It's on Netflix. There, this reminds me that, that like reminds me of when Alfred didn't want to include that Uhtred, basically a Saxon and a Dane helped basically put England together 
So, like, Uhtra will not be mentioned in the battles, but in our hearts we'll know he was there sort of thing. So it's just, yeah. I feel like that uh, revision of the Mongolians past is definitely a thing that can happen. Okay, spoilers over. <laughs> the version would be a reverse black hole. The concept would essentially oh, work like this. So a black hole, as we understand it, is a gravitational center that is so intense it pulls everything in that's around it, including light itself. Okay, well, mm. let's say we created a vacuum through whatever means that sucked all matter out of a certain area, let's say an area the size of this water bottle. We've done that before, right? We've created vacuums in an area. But what if we used an energy that was so concentrated, we didn't just take all of the atoms out of this area, we took gravity itself out of this area. So now we have a perfectly absolute empty vacuum of space. Well, what that would do all at once is create an implosion when all the gravity around this area immediately rushes to fill it it would move at a rate so fast and so powerful that we don't really have numbers to comprehend it. So if you're thinking about this from a mass and energy perspective, the amount of energy being created by no change in mass would be astronomical. Yeah. And while this is a concept that would normally be impossible, concepts now being proven with high energy plasma say that we may be able to get an energy high enough to be able to remove that and therefore create even more energy through the implosion of gravity around it. This could, in theory, create a near infinite energy source or at the very least a means of harvesting gravity as a form of energy. Or as I mentioned however many years ago, using a machine that can- Listen to that, harvesting gravity. Harvesting gravity. Use gravity as a means of transportation through space. That's one possibility. The other possibility is it creates a super black hole and we all die in the blink of an eye. Ah. Uh, either way, not our problem anymore. New Zealand 8th continent is saying that the country of New Zealand is not part of the Australian continent as most believe, but actually its own separate entity. Oh, this shoot. has all but been confirmed as New Zealand and New Caledonia have been analyzed underwater and it's been shown that they exist on a plate separate of that of Australia. The theory being that whatever landmass New Zealand was a part of broke away from the shelves around it some however many long years ago. And New Zealand is one of the only structures that still stick up from this sunken eighth continent. And if once again, you remember how I mentioned in past years, there are several theories that there are missing continents or one giant missing continent that would explain where different societies moved and yeah. different societies influence on the world today, such as Lemuria. The answers to these missing gaps in societal history could exist in the sunken part of New Zealand, or if you're me, the underwater part of New Zealand is where the caves to Agartha are, and you can't tell me otherwise. And that is it for part two of I Tier love them, 7. Bro. As I mentioned, uh, information for the curls in the description below. And there is a, in my opinion, very cool video coming out soon discussing cryptids and the like. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. But above all else, I just want to say thank you for watching. You all mean the most. Um, watching this channel grow as much as it has has been a blessing, and I'm amazed, and it's all thanks to you guys. So sincerely thank you for watching thank you to all my subscribers to get me from where i am thank you to all of my patrons and thank I just you to my top tier talk. patrons um so i am going to be kind of switching up the top tier patron thing as the top tier patrons is quickly getting to the point that's going to be a five minute ad read so as you can see i'm going to begin putting the names on the screen and as a way to make up for that i am going to begin streaming on the patron only discord uh, just to talk to people and get to understand and hopefully it's sort of a way to make up for not saying the names and i'm sorry about it but uh you all have been far too good to me and so many people have been a blessing that um it's getting infeasible to name everyone specifically <laughs> that's cool all right i'll let it i'll let it ride out there will probably be videos in the future that i specifically uh name just if i'm feeling fruity but for now we're just gonna leave it at this and see how it goes so thank you all for watching um, it means the most. Like I said, new videos coming out soon. I hope you all have a good day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> wow, there we go. Another one down. That is awesome. This one had a lot of cool ones, too. Can't wait to get to part three. And I definitely like that idea of watching the last one on stream. That would be definitely cool. So if you guys are interested in seeing me watch the last one it will still be uploaded go follow me on twitch right now down below and 
hold out for that last one also come hang out with me on twitch and stuff too because usually when i upload these especially now i want to get back into a routine of streaming so yeah other than that much love moonlight thank you so much for watching shout out to windagoon again this is awesome and seriously if you can think about the patreon down below other than that i'm having a good time doing this this is awesome and thank you guys for supporting me as well peace Peace out.